The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the raw and uncensored Ambitious Podcast. I'm your host, the original HBIC, Katie Boyd. During our time here together, I will be instilling all of the strength, power, and determination you will need to use the very stones thrown at you to build your ultimate empire. We will redefine the word bitch from the derogatory to the acronym being in total control of herself. So let's adjust our crowns and prepare to live life ambitiously. Oh yeah, here I am, the original HBIC, Katie motherfucking Boyd. <laughs> and over here is my little Christmas elf, yes, Matthew <laughs> Martini Babine. Martini. Oh my God, Mar- that just came oh my out God, of my head. Mar- I, I was a martini last night. That should just Ooh. be your nickname. Ooh, Matt drank so much last night. It was the holiday season. I was a little tired this I'm morning. I'm so over <laughs> it. All this morning, I, like he just rolled over in bed and he was just like, <laughs> breathing his stanky ass breath. That was, I was littered I with breath. Tito's vodka. Let me tell you something. I all was, up in my face. I was a little pickled. <laughs> Dude, that's what's keeping well, you alive. It's yes. like you, you're like a pickled egg. <laughs> well, last night I was. Now I'm done. Now I'm okay. Now it's, just, martini, now it's just babe coffee. I, yeah. Well, you got to, you got to, you know, counteract. Counteract. You know, you're like Judy fucking Garland. <laughs> And meet me in St. Louis. I'm up and down. Yeah. Star is born. <laughs> so today's ambitious podcast is all about surviving to thriving. Five ways to win during the holidays. This is, I'm actually an expert in this field. Because <laughs> you're a winner. Because I am a winner. Yes. Number one. Love the holidays. And I am, I just loathe the holidays. Yep. I'm sure if you have followed the Ambitious Podcast for a while, you can go back to the two-part series from last year, yep. Why I Loathe the Holidays, because everyone calls me a Grinch. But I found out you don't loathe the holidays because you like you loathe certain things of the holidays. It's all an act, Matt. Okay, well, Ambitious I'm just saying, is all an act. It is not an act. No, I'm just kidding. No, but I love the holidays. Like, I love the music yes. and I love the food. Mm-hmm. Not really that much. Yeah. Well, some stuff. So, a lot of the stuff we love. And I just love being like cozy and in my house and like I I love all that stuff. Right. I just don't like the rat race and I don't like being around people because I'm supposed to mm-hmm. because they are like, you know, family members or like distant relatives and you feel like this impending pressure to do all these things. Yes. And I know because so many people in Ambitious Land have reached out to me and said to me, I feel the same way that you feel and my, my family hates me and... So I'm going to help you all out today. But before we start, I want to talk about some things that are coming down the Pretty Pink Pipeline for 2020. So as you guys know, if you follow me um, on Instagram at Katie Boyd Ambitious and at my Facebook, Katie Boyd Ambitious, you'll you'll see that we have amazing events coming up. So number one is Kripalu. Mm-hmm. It is January 3rd, 4th, and 5th in the Berkshires in Massachusetts. It's going to be an incredible weekend. It's going to be epic. I can't wait. Check out the Kripalu website. I'll also link some stuff down in the show notes. So that's going to be the 3rd, 4th, and 5th. And then I have two huge online program starting up on January 6th. So the first one is the Ambitious 28 Fasting, Keto, and Yoga Protocol. We are all going to be starting this together. It's a 28-day program. So if you're interested in that, I'll also link down in the show notes. You can also email me at themisfitclub at gmail.com if you have any questions, or you can DM me, you can private message me, you can send me a carrier pigeon, you can smoke <laughs> signal me. You know you know how to get you know how to get in touch with this get bitch. <laughs> And then the second thing we have is our last ambitious business mistress mind uh, forever. Mm -hmm. And I only accept 10 people and I take them under my wing for 12 full weeks. And then after the 12 full weeks, it's a lifetime membership, which is so freaking amazing. So I'll also link that to the show notes. And that's going to be starting on January 6th also. And then ambitious the book. It's going to be amazing. You guys, 2020 is going to be the most ambitious year yet. (laughs) Very ambitious. I feel it coming, don't you? So if uh, you want 
all the information on Ambitious, the book pre-sale, go over to my website, www.kbmfc, katieboysmisfitclub.com, and you can sign up for the pre-sale, all the information on the pre-sale. There's going to be a little light box that pops up on my website, and just all you have to do is just put your email address in there. And last but certainly not least, I always want to give a big shout out to our Ambitious podcast sponsor. If it wasn't for people like Ayana, we would just be, you know, sitting in our own feces. <laughs> well, maybe a little hairier. Or a little hairier. A little, un- a little uglier. A little unkempt. A little more unkempt. <laughs> By the way, people, and we're going to get to Ayana in a second. It's not unkept. It's yes. unkempt. Unkempt. Yes, right, yes. Mr. Ed Sullivan? It's unkempt. Right, but nobody ever says, wow, he's kempt. Yeah, right, but fun. we should bring that. I'm <laughs> we, yeah, I'm no very, one's like, "Oh, he is so camp." I am camped today. <laughs> Everyone camped. is always unkempt because ninety-eight percent of the world is unkempt, unkempt AF. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to get camped, go over to <laughs> pranahairskinandlash.com. Say, "Hey, Ayana, Katie Kemp. wants me to get camped. Kemp me up, yeah, baby. and she will hook you up with <laughs> our ambitiousness." Camped is a word. It I is. Guess nobody uses it. K e m. P T. Yeah. Yeah, maintained in a neat and clean condition. Oh, well cared for. Oh, yes. so like me. Like so you. I'm like a good kemp. You're a kemp. And then over here is what the unkempt people <laughs> are like Lottie. over here. I'm very kempt. Maybe a little tired from last <laughs> night, but not unkempt. Martini Baybine's having a day. <laughs> Definitely showered and shaven. Oh my god. Uh, my nails they, are buffed. They say you <laughs> might you might call somebody well kempt. Well kempt. Well kempt. <laughs> But people were like, oh, she is so, she is so unkempt. I like the, I'm like, it's unkempt. unkempt. Yes. Not kept. Yes, unkept. <laughs> okay. Yes. That's it. You I think that was to, me you're making fun of, so stop. <laughs> you don't want to be a kept woman, so being unkept yes. might be good. Yes. Because yeah. a kept woman is what? Like, a, she has a sugar daddy? Is yeah. that what that means? Yeah. Oh, I don't know anyone like that. No. no. Or the opposite again, <laughs> where I'm the sugar mama, yes, sugar and this mama. is my sugar baby over here. <laughs> God's sakes. I'll take it. Ayana, I'm sorry. I always butcher your thing. But you know what? You are the best in the business. Yes. You kept yes. you keep everyone kempt. Yes. Well kempt. Well kempt. Are you ready to get into this? Let's get into it. Because the holidays, baby. This is this is so ah, the holidays. Mariah. <laughs> just just get this in your mind, okay? So Mariah is belting out the tunes. Snowflakes are swirling overhead. Oof. We're trimming the tree. You're savoring your favorite Yule time. Yule time. Yule tide. Yule tide. Yule tide log. log <laughs> up your ass if you know what's good for you. You're decking the halls, whatever the fuck that means. <laughs> decking the relatives. <laughs> well, this is what happens. Sometimes they have to be decked. <laughs> <laughs> You're drinking hot toddies by a roaring fire, all while spending a drama-free quality time with family, kin, and loved ones. Mm. Something straight out of a Courier and Ives print, right? Yes. Well, I don't know about you, but this does not sound like the holidays of my yesteryears. <laughs> no, my neither. <laughs> Dishes broken. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, someone's drunk taking relatives. the tree down. So, yeah, getting thrown out. The cops <laughs> arrive yeah. at the, the house. Yeah. All these different things. Abs that can, fucking that can happen. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to be totally transparent here on the Ambitious Podcast. I have not celebrated holidays like this probably in a decade. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we first, start, you and I first started dating, yes, we did one Christmas together, and we're like, "What the fuck?" And are we, we were, doing? I will never forget it. We were in downtown Wellesley, Massachusetts, and we were shopping for Karina, yes, our daughter, and. I remember just sitting on the on my Range Rover, like you know how my old Range Rover it would open like down. Mm-hmm. So we were like sitting on the thing, and we're like eating a piece of like cold pizza, cold pizza, and a cup of coffee. And I'm just like, what in the actual <laughs> fuck are we doing? Yeah. And that is truly for me, you know, why I was just like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. Right. I cannot do this anymore. And I agreed. I was like, oh my god, this is ridiculous. I think this time of year should be peaceful and, and, and joyful yes. and be able to spend time with family yes. with not running around like a maniac trying to buy a bunch of stuff that no nobody shit. wants or uses. Well, what do they say? Like you buy things that you can't afford to impress people that you don't even like. Right? It's right? So true. It's like, yeah. give me a freaking break. Yeah. So today, Martini Babine and I are going <laughs> to teach you have, how to have a very bitchy Christmas. <laughs> Bitchin'. Yeah. A bitchin' Christmas. Bitchy and bitchin'. Yeah, both. Yeah, you're going to have a very ambitious Christmas. (laughs) Fuck. I'm getting bubble guts just thinking about it. (laughs) 
So just so you guys know, we go away for the holidays. So when you guys see my Instagram and you see my Facebook feed, it is going to just be me luxuriating in all things <laughs> ambitious. And yeah, spend the time to think and yeah. relax and, and take care well, of yourself. Well, we do a think week. So we go away and we schedule massages and spa appointments and we have dinner out and we bring our little dog Pearl and Karina comes and sees us and it's literally the most relaxing time yes. while everybody else is just like swearing at each other and beating the fuck out of each other for like Power Rangers or whatever the oh. hell you guys do nowadays. <laughs> Power Rangers. Fucking, we were watching a Power Ranger movie I last know. night. That's why. For me, it was Cabbage Patch Kids. <laughs> like my mother would go in and like just oh. deck somebody for a Cabbage Patch Kid. Yeah, for me, it was the, uh, what do you call it? Star Wars? Mm-hmm. Figurine, yeah, but you said you got calls. screwed on that one. I did. I got like some kind of a, like a job of the hut or something, and I'm like looking for like Luke Skywalker right? and Darth Vader. Oh yeah, they were all sold out. My mom goes, "Here you go, it's Jabba." I'm like, "I don't want Jabba. <laughs> Who the gonna, hell what, wants what, Jabba? What the, what the hell am I going to do with Jabba? Nothing. I need, I need Luke, or I need all this, he does is lightsaber. sit there and eat. Or I got a Ben Kenobi, and oh, I'm like, "Oh geez. God, Ben Kenobi is a great character, but I want the action guy." Absolutely. You know? My poor mother one time went to the Swansea Mall. I think <laughs> she fought a bunch of ladies in there, <laughs> and. <laughs> you know, they had the little ki- baby Cabbage Patch Kids, oh, yeah, and then I they remember. had the big ca- yeah. pa- Cabbage Patch Kids, yeah. and she could only get me a m- little one, and I was just like disappointed for a whole <laughs> this whole entire year. I was just like, lady, what am I going to do with this <laughs> fucking right. tiny Cabbage Patch doll? That's right. Job it hot. Yeah. Same thing. <laughs> See, we, put, Same thing. We, we were living... L- parallel lives on different times and space planes yes. in different dimensions. <laughs> ah, different dimensions. Oh my right. God. Okay. So here we go. Martini Babine and I are going to talk about how to have a very bitchin' Christmas. Number one, adjust your expectations accordingly. Mm. Just having the awareness that the holidays give you bubble guts in the first place is the first step in thriving during the holiday season. When you're honest with yourself about how the holidays of the past have made you feel, you can better prepare yourself for what is about to ensue. For an example, if your aunt always feels the need to ask why you aren't married yet and it gets your blood boiling like a mince meat pie straight out of the oven, you got to just know that she will do it again. People like this, unfortunately, do not change their tunes, not even on baby Jesus's birthday, y'all. (laughs) <laughs> I love that. Right? Knowing what's about to go down and just telling yourself to get ready for the comments will help you not take it personal because you have already set your expectations of the event itself. So for me, when that happens in the past, I would smile and nod. That also works. And you could also just tell Aunt Margaret that you haven't decided, you've decided to be a nun and marry the Lord. And that could <laughs> shut her the fuck up. Ain't no one going to mess with the lady of the cloth, yo. So right? True, right? It's so yeah, true. I know. My aunt was a nun, and I'll tell you something. <laughs> you don't mess with her. She, you didn't mess with her. Maybe she got a lot of free did. meals. A lot of free meals. That Kells roast beef. Kells roast beef. Oh, I, <laughs> I love them. Look at And Sullivan's like, I could go for a Kelly's right now. <laughs> I love Kelly's roast beef. I'm thinking of becoming a nun. Yes. Oh, well, that, that, well let me tell you. That's my, a huge my, thing. My aunt was a nun, and I'll tell you, she taught a lot of different kids all over Massachusetts, and I'll tell you, they all happened to own restaurants, apparently, <laughs> because we would show up, oh my God, Sister Alice, it's you. You. They just start loading up the bags and the, the clams. clams and the scallops. Wow. Delicious. And, you know, you know, this is pretty amazing. Because they wow. thought that they were going to get closer to yeah. God by feeding yeah. her fried so, food. So it's like, sometimes the Lord works in mysterious ways. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Oh, she'd be calling it as like the mafia getting the payout. You know, just, you know I'm so here. True. I'll pray. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes, like, God you know, you almost have to go into Christmas with, like, with laughs, right? Yeah. Like, okay, I know that this aunt of mine is going to fuck with me and ask me, well, why aren't you married? Why haven't you found the one yet. Mm. And if you just say to her, you know, I'm contemplating yeah. being a nun. Yeah. Like in the next year, I'm probably going to make that decision. Yeah. She'll shut her right the fuck up. You'll be good for the rest of Even if it's a big, fat, dirty fucking lie. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you got to fib on the yeah. holidays. Yeah. yeah. Right? Absolutely. It's nobody's business. No one's right? damn business. Yeah. Mind your business, people. <laughs> Jeez Louise. <laughs> Number two, identify your triggers ahead of time to protect yourself. The holiday season should be called hashtag triggered season. Spending time with family around the holidays can be not just dicey, but sometimes an all around shit show. So before you go into it, you got to think like a war strategist. Matt always says this to me. Mm. The dialogue in your mind leading up to the battle should sound like this. Will they attack me by land? <laughs> Will they invade my camp during the night? Over mashed potatoes. <laughs> Will they drop? Bombs on me from the air. (laughs) 
<laughs> thinking deeply about how things are going to go down and what potential landmines can trigger you and explode will prepare you better than Mike Horvath and Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> right? Well, the worst times I've ever had was where I would just show up and not really think about you know who's going to be there, what's going to be said, <laughs> what are the topics, is it a political year? Yes. All these things, right? Oh, have and to we are in a political to, year this year. We are a political year, so I can just imagine Get some your of the, big boy and girl panties these, on. Some of these meals that are going to be had, you know. You I mean, walk in and everyone's wearing like MAGA hats at your, and you're just like, here we are. Yeah, just, you know, here we are. you go, right? Yeah. I mean, and it's it's kind of crazy. But I think it's, if you think about it, you know, who's coming, who's in the list, who may be on the list, yes. and who may be surprised, yes. right? And I think you're a lot better prepared to be able to deal with 100%. what's coming. It's incoming. Yes. And then if you throw in a few Mattinis in there, <laughs> then you could have some problems, right? If oh. you're not, if you're not geared up to, hey, this person's an ass. This person's going to say this, yes. And there's always somebody, and there's always somebody that's going to say something like underhanded, right? Oh. You don't. You kind of have to think is like, was it an insult? Was it not an insult? Nothing like a was good it, double-sided compliment right? to get the party started. Yeah, right. This happens, and you know, sometimes sometimes you have a lot of people that are jealous or oh. whatever the case may be, and we all get together, yeah, and celebrate and drink lo- our faces off, yeah. What the flying fuck? Did it's we, crazy. What yeah, the yeah. hell is this all about? <laughs> this is bamboozlement and I mean, tomfoolery. I, I used to watch the Brady Bunch going, how come my Christmas is not like that? Damn. <laughs> Why am I not in Hawaii yeah. right now with the bad TV? Yes, exactly. God damn it. Right? That's so true. <laughs> Number three, practice mindfulness by making an emotional and spiritual game plan. Mm. So during this season, it is the worst idea ever to throw out your spiritual and emotional practices. This is the time that you need it more than ever. Meditating every day, setting your intentions, cutting your energetic cords with people, cloaking, doing whatever it takes to get through this difficult time unscathed. This is your arsenal of weapons during this Yuletide battle. So let's get ready to rumble. You have to. You mean you need it more. I mean, this is probably the most stressful time in people's lives. I mean, I noticed it the other day we were talking when I was just out just working. I was in Boston (laughs) uh, at one of the hospitals for regional. And I was like, oh my God, these people, people are driving crazy yes. and it's like it's like where are you going yes. i mean you're not gonna go anywhere you're gonna die i mean i mean they're <laughs> cutting people off, off like they're playing a video game someone tried to run my range miles. rover i just got this new range yeah. rover so i'm trying to figure out how to use it right <laughs> and because that's how, how i roll she won't read the manual. no I, I will not read the manual that's against my ambitious my ambitious <laughs> rules but i'm driving to the the studio the other day to meet with matt because we were doing something and this girl was like riding my ass riding my ass oh. and there was like 50 cars in front of me on this like main road near our house. So she drives up by the side of me. I felt like I was in National Lampoon's like (laughs) Christmas vacation, you know? And I like look over at her and she just has her double fingers and she's like, like looking at me. I'm like, okay, bitch, where are you going? There's 35 cars and there's like no broken lines. So get back behind me, fucker. She's probably not even going in that direction anymore. She followed you just to give you the fingers. Oh my God, absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. I was just like, holy shit. But um, my, my good friend Maureen Hancock, our good friend oh, yeah, Maureen Hancock, yeah. she posted this the other day on Facebook and I screenshot it to, talk, to just mention it. She says, you're going to come in contact with an awful lot of people who are at their absolute breaking point this week. Yeah. Friends, family, coworkers, teachers, strangers in the grocery store, retail workers. While it may be the merriest time of year for some, it may be the saddest, most stressful, loneliest, most heartbreaking for others. We are all busy, but we are not too busy to be kind, caring, and patient. Remember the best thing you can give someone in the season of love. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. It's so true. Like, guys, don't don't be throwing out your meditation. Don't be throwing out your breathing mm-hmm. exercises. Don't no. be throwing any of the ambitious things that I and Martini Babine have taught you yes. over the last year and a half or so of this podcast. Yeah. Like, this is the time to pull all those tools out of your toolbox. And, and I, think, I think everyone feels it too, you know, that the, the pressure cooker is on, yeah. right? I mean, during this time and just spend a little bit more time being a little bit kinder, you know, spend time Slow you know, loving people um, and understanding everyone's not having a great time right. during the holiday. You know totally. I mean? There's still disease going on. There's still people that get, you know get sick and, 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 and injured and in loss yeah. and all these different things totally. going on. So it's uh, take that time to yes. to remember other people too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Number four, I have to remind Matt this all the time. Remember, 
You ain't motherfucking Santa Claus, okay? <laughs> you are not. In my book, there's nothing more sad and desperate than trying to buy love from your family and friends by taking out a second mortgage on your home to fund the gift giving. Mm -hmm. This time of year has lost its luster and meaning because instead of focusing on what the holidays are supposed to be about, we focus more on what we can give to people to show our love, appreciation, and affection. Thus, helping fill up the heart-sized hole that we all have in our souls. This will never help. The holidays are supposed to be about spending quality time with friends and family members, having drinks, playing games, engaging in deep conversation, reminiscing about the old times. Even more so, this time frame is really more about the winter solstice. So this is for the people in the back, if you can't all hear me. <laughs> Okay, the winter solstice, which starts December 21st, this is a time of death and rebirth to reflect and hunker down for some restoration and rejuvenation. In pagan time, it was called Yule. So for all y'all Christians that are like, Katie, you're supposed to be a good Catholic. I don't understand. <laughs> okay, read a motherfucking book people, because Christmas trees and Yule logs and wreaths are pagan. It's actually worshiping the god Odin, which is a Viking god. Yes. So step the fuck off my jock. I knew okay? all about Odin. <laughs> right? It was Odin. <laughs> you know who Odin is. I have no idea. Well, now I do because you educated me on Jesus. him. I had no idea. <laughs> this is a time to be more like animals and get slow and hibernate and quiet and peaceful. It isn't about running around like turkeys with our heads cut off. And this is where the disconnect ha happens, yeah. right, Matt? Yeah, plus sun, the sun goes down around here at 2.30 in the afternoon. Oh, my God. Like, I go, what the hell is going on? I mean, I don't know. This year, I've noticed it more than any other me year. Me, too. Me, and too. When you read that to me, and uh, you, know, you were talking to me about, you know, uh, you know, during this time is really to kind of, you know, stay in, regroup. Reflect. Re reflect. Think. You know, move with purpose and slow down. Yeah. And And I'll tell you something. I'm like... Yeah, it's <laughs> the sun's going down at two thirty, and when I think a lot of people buck the system, and the energy is the the Earth changes during this time, yes. right, where we live, and it gets darker earlier, yes. and all these different things. But I think we really try to just keep on pushing regular yes. when it's you know it's time to reflect, no, and I don't we think people to, take it. We we as humans now in this day and age, we have like lost the divine part of ourselves and the mm -hmm. animalistic parts of ourselves, which in some ways are in, animalistic ways are not all good. Yeah. Yes. But in these ways, we have to start going back to like our ancient wisdom that's like innate in our DNA. Mm -hmm. And like the other day, it was like five o'clock in the afternoon. And I looked at Matt and I go, I'm going to go lay down in bed now. And he was like, <laughs> bitch, it's five. And I was like, I know, but I'm tired. <laughs> you go to bed early anyway. But now, yes. this, like, well, we went out for a walk yesterday and we oh had a beautiful God. walk. And it was like, I go, well, let's get out around two o'clock because we're probably <laughs> half an hour before it starts getting dark. And, it just, and, was, and the sun was setting already. I was joking, but I'm looking, I'm like, what the hell? Yes. This is crazy. And we took our dog with us and mm -hmm. she's like, what the hell are we doing out here? It's yeah. freezing. She was let's not a happy back. camper in oh. her snowman outfit. Oh. But so guys, Slow the fuck down and know that this is a time of slowness and rejuvenation and reflection and not being Santa Claus. You, buying all this crap, it doesn't matter. And you're putting yourself into like six months of debt for what? Yeah. So someone can be like, oh, thank you for the socks, yeah, the six pack of socks. 21% or whatever ridiculous number the credit card companies. Please, some yeah. of these freaking, some of these stores that they have their like store credit cards are like 20 fucking percent. Yeah, no, it's That's insane. disgusting. Insane. You should be ashamed of yourselves, Victoria's Secret. Yes. Well, I don't know. <laughs> it's I true. I kind of like Victoria's Secret myself. But. Oh, Matt, you're such a pervert. <laughs> Why does it always have to go there? I'm not there? complaining about you. I think that they need to make male lingerie. Yes. Like doilies for like your they, cock they, and balls. They, they do. My, my, <laughs> my, <laughs> they, they do. I, I, I wear it every day. My robe, my, you know. I'm not talking about that googly elephant, those <laughs> banana hammock thing with the googly eyes that you wear. <laughs> That looks like you're a hey, stripper at Alex's in Stoughton, Massachusetts. Don't tell everybody, you know, my ways to get to you. <laughs> I want everybody to it's know. It's such a turn on. Oh, yes, it is. That's why I bought it. Oh my God, <laughs> shoot me now. And then last but not least, the fifth way to make sure that you're not just surviving, but you're thriving during this holiday season is escape. <laughs> get out of Dodge. Escape. 
escape (laughs) if all else has failed and you are ready to just throw in the towel and believe you me, this is the only time I would ever tell you to quit something. Mm -hmm. If exposing yourself to family drama, old wounds that have not healed, maliciousness, drug and alcohol abuse, and just ungodly pressures, then it's time for you to stand up and be the HBIC of your holiday season and run away. Better yet, step into your power by choosing to not participate in things that don't make you feel like the best and most ambitious version of yourself. I allocate money to go away, even if it's just for two days somewhere that's stress-free. Maybe a spar getaway with Drew the Trick. Sounds like our familiar holiday, right? Just tell your people that you will not be taking part in the festivities and be open, honest, and concrete. Set the boundaries, people. If they cannot handle this, that has nothing to do with you. It's everything to do with them. And when people love you deeply and they want you to be happy, even if it means getting out of Dodge for the season. Do you believe this? Oh my God. That's with all your heart. That's my religion. With all your little black heart. <laughs> my religion is I got to get out of here when it's time for the holidays. I just really like to. But you were like, like to that before. Opposite. No, no. I used to, because I was, it's almost like conditioned, right? Where you, you condition, oh, you're supposed to buy presents. You're supposed to do this, you're supposed to do that. But how about giving you a present that we're going to spend some time together? Quality time. Create, create, um, uh, events in your life, yes. you know, experiences in your life opposed to something, oh yeah, that's good, open it up, throw it over there with the other stuff. Oh my God. And then nobody remembers what they had or what you gave them mm-hmm. next year mm-hmm. anyways. I know. Right? We've been to Christmas parties where like friends of ours, children have like open gifts and they like ripped through them so fast and they, I don't even think that they like looked at what it, they were. Right. And right. I was just like, fuck this that's crazy. noise. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is so like, it's just low vibrational. Yes. Right? Yeah, I think so. And because we had, when we grew up, right, we were like, my grandmother would be like, okay, for Christmas, this is what we do and this is what we eat. And I loved that, Mm -hmm. but that just doesn't feel like it doesn't resonate with me anymore. So if that is how you guys feel out there in a bitches land, make your own new Traditions. Traditions. Yeah, that's what we did, right? Because I mean, when you say you hate Christmas, you hate all of that kind yes, of stuff with yes. Christmas, right? I like the to pressure, be overly dramatic um, to get my point across, the, the as pressure, you all know. The pressure, the driving, the craziness, the, the 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 debt, all of the things that are not anything to do with Christmas. It was really looking at it's about love, kindness, what they think that it is, right? Yes. And it's the opposite. It's right. like, give me that pack cabbage patch cake and out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> give me that Star Wars figure so my kid won't kill me because it's fucking job of the hot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> I don't know what kids want now, but it's pretty much the same thing, right? It just keeps on going over and over. And, you know, being able to take that time and set up your own traditions. If you're on your own, you don't have to do that anymore. And that's what I decided a long time ago. I was like, this doesn't work for me. You know, this doesn't work for our family. Mm -hmm. And when we kind of made it a conscious choice yes. to do things differently. Right. Then we have experience. Oh my God, remember last Christmas we were there or we, we did this. So we yes. we remember those things. We totally. have pictures, we have memories, you know, really great times. And I think a lot of people that are close to you when you finally get these kind of boundaries and say, I don't want to participate in this, a lot of people get really offended and they make it like it's about them. Mm-hmm. But you have to understand, even if you're listening to this and you're hearing what I'm saying and you're like, well, I would be upset if my daughter did this to me, or I would be upset if my sister did this to me, or my best friend. It's not about you. Stop making it about your fucking self all the time. Right. It's about your own, that person's own choices. And, and no, it's funny. After I tell people a lot of the times what oh, we're doing, yeah. they're like, fuck, I wish I could do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But they're roped into, oh, I got to do it. They're doing, allowing themselves, I've been doing though. this so long. I just have to do it this way. And it's almost like, you know, Karina, our daughter, has never been to Disney. No. And it's not because, you know, she never asked because we always had other things that we would be doing or yes. whatever the case may be. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's kind of like going against everything right. else, right? It's, it's more... I think it's more conscious of this is where I'm going. This yes, is what I want to yes. do. Yes. Well, instead of Disney, you would take her to like Hawaii. Hawaii or different Give her different, different experiences. Different experiences. Yeah. Against, where, against the grain of what everyone else would be doing with their children. Like, we have to go to Disney. Right. 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 And you're like, and I'm oh, not saying it's better or uh, no. it's not better. I'm just saying. It's just our choice. It was our choice, right? Like how we, you know, have an experience. Absolutely. Opposed to buying a bunch of tchotchke. Tchotchke. Did I say that the right way? Tchotchke. tchotchke yes. Stuff, tchotchke. You know, that you're not going to remember. Yeah. <laughs> I fucking hate tchotchke. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope. Each and every one of you out there in ambitious land has a very ambitious Christmas. And like I always say, see you next Tuesday. Great job, babe. This 
The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.